said not 
he met an attractive young woman, Nozaki would give her his card along with the equivalent of $100 as an incentive to call him. He wrote a sequel under the same Don Juan name, in which he writes more about his longevity. Quote, I live to have sex with beautiful women. For that reason, I became a very wealthy person. I kind of said that already, but, you know. He also wrote about how he met his newest wife, Saki Sudo. He said he met her in the fall of 2017 at a Tokyo airport when he pretended to stumble to get her attention. But some reports say that they met through a third party and that Sudo allegedly worked as a high-end call girl and uh, prostitution is illegal in Japan. As a side note, Sudo, described as a tall, raven-haired beauty in one article, was born and raised in Hokkaido Prefecture, which is um, like the northern part of Japan. It's on like a little island above like the main island, you know. After graduating from a beauty club, from a beauty school in 2016, she moved to Tokyo and in December she enrolled in a dating club that matched young, attractive women with wealthy men. The club promised relationships based on the papagatsu thing that I mentioned earlier. Quote, women are ranked based on their appearance and Sudo ranked right at the top. Someone involved told reporters. After that, Sudo started acting in porn, starring in four movies, one of which was called Bar Hopping Until the Morning, where the male lead picks Sudo up at a bar in the Ebisu area of Tokyo, shows her some video shot overseas, whatever that means, then brings her to a hotel. When Sudo and Nozaki started dating, he promised her an apartment in Tokyo and an allowance of uh, of $10,000 a month, which I think is a million yen. In February 2018, Nozaki, who was 77 at the time, married Sudo, who was 55 years younger than him at just 22 or 21 years old. Quote, Would you like to be the last woman? Nozaki asked Sudo prior to their wedding. Nozaki was annoyed by warnings that she was only interested in his money when he married her, saying, I'm sorry for the 99% of people who wish for this marriage to fall apart, but I'm confident that I'll be happy. According to a former executive from Nozaki's company, the condition for the marriage was that Nozaki would pay Sudo an allowance of 1 million yen per month. Sudo reportedly told her family that she was moving from Sapporo to work at her friend's real estate business, but didn't tell them that she was married. Reported that Sudo was secretive about her marriage, but posted lots of photos of expensive vacations to her social media. A former classmate told the outlet she, quote, never mentioned having a job, but boasted about her expensive clothes and said she had plenty of money. Sudo told friends she paid for trips that she plastered on social media with investments. Sudo and Nozaki had issues from pretty much the very beginning of their marriage, though. Sudo was frequently going on solo trips to places like Italy, Singapore, and Dubai, buying tons of designer clothes with her husband's money. She preferred the upscale waterfront condo that Nozaki rented for her in the Shinagawa ward of Tokyo to his mansion in the sleepy city of Wakayama, almost 300 miles away. Nozaki seemed to have a good reason to put up with the absences and his new wife's pension for her pricey designer clothes, though, saying, Quote, she has white skin with a firmness that repels water. In his second book, our time in the bedroom is also fun. I'm convinced that is the secret to staying young. We have a quota of sex three times a day, and I don't need Viagra. I know having so much sex may cause death, but if I can die doing it and go to heaven, then I'm good. And so, remember his dog, Eve, that he loved like a child. He was so devoted to her that he told Sudo and anyone else who would listen pretty much that he planned on leaving his inheritance to her after he died. Like I said before, she was a mini dachshund named Eve, and on May 6, 2018, she suddenly came down with a mystery illness. A report said, quote, Eve suddenly became ill and was taken in the middle of the night to a veterinary. Despite him rushing her in to get care for her, though, she ended up dying in Nozaki's arms that night and friends said that Nozaki was devastated and asked a monk at a local temple to conduct a memorial service, which I would guess is not something that happens very often. After that, he tearfully buried Eve in the backyard and was planning a June celebration in honor of, of her, busily inviting friends, business associates, and even securing mus musicians for the event. But 18 days after Eve died and three months into his marriage with Sudo, on the night of May 22nd, 
least at some point, obviously. It was too late for Nozaki, though, and he was pronounced dead after never regaining consciousness. And autopsies showed that he had died of acute stimulant intoxication. And Japanese stimulants are called kakuseizai, which came up a lot in articles, so I thought I'd just put that in there. With a high level of unnamed narcotics in his bloodstream. Because of that, a week after his death, police launched a murder investigation. The autopsy hadn't found any injection marks on his arms or any other part of his body, meaning that the stimulants were taken orally. A male acquaintance of Nozaki's told the Mainichi newspaper that Nozaki was careful about the foods he ate, saying, I can't believe he would willfully ingest stimulant drugs on his own. Police searched Nozaki's house, along with various locations connected to Nozaki's housekeeper and their family in Tokyo. At his house, they found traces of stimulant drugs on the kitchen floor and inside the bag of a vacuum cleaner. An employee at one of Nozaki's companies said that after his death, the police requested that all employees submit to urine analysis. I was astonished. He was quoted as saying, Police analyzed the urine of people connected to Nozaki to see if any of the results would provide a positive for stimulant drugs. None of them did, though. The police also seized about 2,000 bottles of beer from his house and his alcohol company, but none of them were found to have been laced with stimulants either. After, non after Nozaki's death, authorities suspected foul play and Eve's passing and went so far as to exhume her but they didn't end up being able to do a necropsy because the remains were too decomposed. While the investigation was going on, Nozaki's funeral was held, and Sudo wasn't exactly the perfect picture of a grieving widow. Quote, she had no tears or anything, a former executive, I'm assuming one of Nozaki's companies, told newspapers. A man who attended Nozaki's funeral told Sudo, it must be hard considering the death of your husband, to which she responded, not really. And during the majority of the funeral, she was busy on her smartphone, not paying attention to the proceedings. Right after his death, Sudo called an art dealer to Nozaki's house to evaluate paintings he'd owned, though it wasn't reported whether any paintings were actually sold at that time. Just weeks after the funeral, on May 30th, 2018, Sudo unilaterally appointed herself president of the million dollar company he'd founded after calling a meeting of his relatives and shareholders at his house in Taname, to which they all refused to come. Quote, Sudo, who deemed that the relatives had entrusted her to handle administrative procedures, created minutes saying that she held an extraordinary general shareholders meeting on July 30th at Nozaki's house, according to a report in the Mainichi Daily newspaper. Sudo, who was the only one present, served as the chair and appointed herself as the company's representative director. In addition to leaving his $11 million fortune to Eve, Nozaki had planned to give some of his, some of his assets to Tanabe, the city that he had been born in. Quote, he was saying positive things recently, like he wants to contribute to the local community. His death is truly regrettable, a childhood friend of Nozaki's told the Kyoto News. But since civil law says that half of his fortune would go to his widow, the city of Tanabe went into talks with Sudo about splitting the money. She also had plans to leave Japan shortly after the funeral, but the pandemic made that impossible. A lawyer for an auditor that served Nozaki's real estate company said that around 38 million yen, or $275,400, was transferred to her from a company account in September 2018. After Nozaki's death, Sudo moved several times before setting, settling down in the condo in the Shinagawa ward of Tokyo that she'd been living in before. One month after Nozaki's death, Wakayama Prefectural Police hadn't made much progress in the case, so they opened his house in Tanabe City up to the press. During a tour of the second floor of the house, two safes, one standing 1.4 meters, or 4.5 feet tall, the other 1.8 meters, which is almost 6 feet tall, were shown. The police got the manufacturer to open them, and they found only a suit and tie inside, but no cash. A brown suitcase found in the room was also empty. According to 
a source is connected to Nosaki's company, he was known to have kept about 200 million yen in cash, which would be 1.45 million dollars, in his house, so police suspected that someone had taken it before their investigation started. On October 20th, 2018, another book was written about the Don Juan of Japan, though obviously it wasn't put by Nozaki himself, but the cover and formatting is made to look like the other books, and it's called The Don Juan of Wakayama's Murder, The Whole Truth as Seen by a Ghost Writer. And the summary is, or the blurb, you know, is urgent publication. Why was Kishu's Don Juan killed? Includes an exclusive, long interview with suspicious new wife. Aims to clarify all purported incidents. Facts that have not been revealed so far, such as the conversation that Mr. Takashi Yoshida, who is also a writer of Kishu's Don Juan series, had with Don Juan just before his death, and the scene the police came to search his house after his death. All the facts that have been revealed so far are written. This is also a Google translated translation, you can probably tell. Don Juan called the author, who is Takashi Yoshida, on the day of his death, saying, I want you to come to Wakayama right now. I have something I want to talk to you about. Did Don Juan fear that he would be killed? The new wife killed him, right? No, that housekeeper is suspicious. After the death of Kosuke Nozaki, aka the Don Juan of Kishu, all of, all of Japan turned into a total of 100 million detectives. A, a rare, lecherous, wealthy man died three months after marrying a woman 55 year, years younger than him. Don Juan's ghost writer who lived with his new wife and housekeeper under one roof even after the incident. Mr. Takashi Yoshida, Takashi Yoshida, will reveal for the first time the coverage of records that have been sealed up until now. What is the identity of the true criminal that emerges from there? The title in Japanese is Kishu no Tanwan Satsukai Shihani no Shotai Kosto Raita Kamita Zen Shin Years old by then. Her family, 
also had no idea where she was living or that she had married Nozaki at all until after her arrest. Sudo had told them that she paid for the lavish trips she flaunted on social media thanks to savvy real estate investments. I don't even know where to go to see my daughter, Sudo's mother told reporters after her arrest. I only went to her home in Tokyo once and only heard about things from TV and the internet. Ow. The police, along with Nozaki's family, had suspected that Sudo was responsible for Nozaki's death pretty much the entire time especially when they found phone records that showed internet searches for stimulant drugs and poisons on Sudo's phone. The police, along with Nozaki's family, had pretty much always been suspicious of her, like I said, with the police saying she'd been a suspect for years, mostly because she was in the house when her husband died. Sudo had initially told authorities that she heard a noise from the couple's bedroom, went to see what was going on, and found Nozaki slumped on a couch in his bedroom. Police, who also questioned Nozaki's longtime housekeeper, who was also in the house at the time of his death, now claim that Sudo gave Nozaki a poison laced cocktail shortly before he died. Police also said that Sudo had searches on her smartphone about purchasing stimulant drugs and how to kill a person before Nozaki's death. They think that she bought the drugs from a dealer in Tanabe via social media, and they traced her phone and saw it had been in the same location as the dealer's at one point. On the night Nozaki had died, police determined that the maid had left the house for about four hours after she had made dinner for them, leaving Sudo alone with Nozaki for that time. The issue was the police hadn't been able to find evidence that showed how Sudo gave Nozaki the drugs. The autopsy had shown about one gram of drugs in his stomach contents and in his blood. What further cemented her as a suspect is that police found out that Nozaki was planning to, to divorce Sudo said that Nozaki had gone as far as telling her to complete divorce paperwork, which caused them to get into an argument. The reason he wanted to divorce her was that he was unhappy with her refusal to stay in Tanabe with him. The police didn't say right away whether or not Sudo confessed to the crime, but newspapers eventually revealed that she was denying the allegations and refusing to talk to the police. The site for Shukan Jose says that Sudo could be an example of a person overcome by greed. The article said that there is a speculation that she was infatuated with a local popular bar host in the Kabukicho red light district of Tokyo. Quote, last year he let it leak that he was planning to quit, a person working in the adult entertainment industry said. He's happy now that he's landed a rich lady. Sudo was sent to prosecutors on April 29th, 2021, and prosecutors only had up until May 19th that year to either formally charge Suda or release her. The deadline could not be extended and there hadn't been any new witnesses that came forward after her arrest, so the police didn't have a lot of concrete evidence other than the things that I mentioned, which meant that there was a risk of them not being able to charge her due to a lack of evidence. On May 19th, she was indicted for murder. She also was served another arrest warrant on suspicion of fraud saying that she'd lied to a 67-year-old man in Sapporo, Sapporo in late 2015, early 2016, telling him that he had to pay money for injuring a woman, and he ended up giving her 11.9 million yen, which is $79,700. She also had criminal charges filed against her for the 300000 she transferred from Nozaki's business's bank accounts, with the auditors accusing her of that. Wakayama District Public Prosecutor's Office acknowledged that it only has circumstantial evidence against Saki Suda, and the suspect had also denied the allegations. But the incident, uh, but the indictment indicates they are confident they can establish her guilt with the circumstantial evidence and convince a court that a murder was committed and that Suda was the only person capable of carrying it out. And the reason that I keep mentioning that it would it'd be hard to convict is because Japan's legal system relies heavily on getting confessions from criminals that they primarily use to convict them. And you know, to me, and maybe other Americans or other, like, people with a similar justice system, like, that evidence that they mentioned is pretty damning. But, um, like, I think it'd probably be like a 70-30 chance of her getting found guilty if she was tried here. But from what I've read, in other cases and stuff like that, it's 
sort of a toss-up about whether they would let her off due to reasonable doubt or whether she would actually get convicted. Sudo is being held at Marunouchi Detention Center in Wakayama to await her trial. Quote, there is no indication of when the trial will start, but it is certain to take a long time, said a reporter from a national newspaper. Um, yeah. I couldn't find any articles from last year or this year, 2023, so I'm assuming that her trial hasn't started yet. And finally, there's also a book where the housekeeper, who it says worked for Nosaki for 30 years, talks about his life, all the women he'd been with, and how his marriage was, and then of course the events of the last night of his life. It's called The Housekeeper Saw, Kishu's Don Juan, His Wife, and Seven Papakatsu Girls. Um, and I read, I read some of the reviews for that book, which were of course and just google translated but it seemed like like you know the housekeeper was there and she lived with them and you'd think that she would have played like a more major part in this investigation um and maybe she did but the articles that i read just didn't say it but from those uh reviews that i read it seems like the housekeeper was a single mother and she ended up facing like a lot of like judgment and like scrutiny I guess from the public after all this happened so she kind of tried to keep out of the spotlight and apparently she went overseas for a while I don't know if that was like to avoid the spotlight or just for a coincidental reason so she ended up not having it too easy in the wake of all this as well. I guess, you know, a lot of people suspected her, as you might, but it's not like she got anything out of it. She lost her job, and she didn't get any money, so, like, it doesn't really make sense that she would be the one to do it, but I guess people have lots of reasons for killing someone, right? And so that's all I have on this case. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Sorry, I ended up restating a lot of the facts a couple times. Um, I ended up reading, like, so many articles about this, and they all pretty much said the same thing, except for there'd be, like, one or two paragraphs of information that I didn't already have. So, when I was, like, compiling the information, a lot of the same information ended up getting, like, put in there. And, of course, I, like, went over it and reworded it to be, like, in my own words and stuff, but some of that slipped through I hope it wasn't too repetitive. Um, like I said before, please leave me a comment and a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd very much appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you next week with another video. I'm thinking about doing just like an aud in an audible reading video just in the meantime because I want to keep putting videos out researching cases does tend to take a bit of time, and I have like summer semester classes as well that I'm taking, so it'll be a little easier on me personally if I release sort of just like a, you know, easy type of video to record, and I do find videos like that pretty enjoyable. I'm going to be reading a book, this book, mostly because it has the crinkly, it used to be a library book parents got it for me for Christmas because I was like a huge Duran Duran fan back in high school. So it has like the crinkly 